the God of the breakthrough And when I can't see my way through And I really don't know what to do I look to you, breakthrough Walls fall down when I shout through Strongholds break when I pray through So I'm gonna praise you You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough Oh, 
praise you. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through, and I really don't know what to do, I look to you.
It's in this holy presence that we now have the opportunity to worship through giving to the cause and the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. As our ushers make ready, we want to give our regular tithe and offerings that we we do on a Sunday. Of course, I know some of you do that through Simple Give, but we also give you the opportunity to give by check or cash or uh, however. And we, we, we are also at this time going to take a special offering. And I want uh, that special offering once again to really impact the kingdom from what we as a church family can do added to what churches all over the world are doing in this move the mission offering now I uh, wrote mine as a check and so I'm going to put it in which uh, receptacle is for move the mission we need a separate place for move the mission or you uh, can have labeled as long as you have labeled it correctly uh, brother Josh sister Carly will be able to figure that out but we uh, have been telling you for weeks now that we are uh, leading up to this annual sacrifice offering we give to the cause of move the mission this supports so many areas that we've shown you on the videos of, of the work of God it, it, it supports youth work it supports our Tupelo Children's Mansion uh, ministry. It, it, it supports uh, our Bible colleges. It supports Bible quizzing. But the, the main thing it does is it buys vehicles for missionaries all over the world. Whatever type of vehicles they need to move the mission on their mission fields, that is the main thrust of this ministry. And it is so important for us to be doing our best, what we can do, to send the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. Tim's going to be holding this box for you to put your, your Move the Mission offering in. And the other uh, offering pans will be for our regular tithe and offering for this Sunday. Would you just bow your heads right now? I know we've asked you to be praying and being prayerful about this special offering we take once a year for weeks now. But one more time, Lord, we just pray that you will cover our hearts. And thank you that you have given uh, our hearts through, through many years, through decades actually, hearts to give in this sacrifice offering we do once a year, knowing and having seen and watched all of the good that has come out of the, the Sheaves for Christ. We used to call it offerings, and now we call it Move the Mission. But, but we are, are just so excited that we can participate together in giving to this cause of, of moving the gospel. Thank you for the privilege, Lord. Thank you for a people that you have placed within them a deep longing and a heart to worship you in giving in these special ways that we do at different points throughout the year. And I, I, I just praise you for another opportunity, Lord, that you've given us to just express our worship to you in this way. In your precious name of Jesus, we pray.
clap our hands. I am so glad that's the way our God felt about us and feels about us and loves us and is working with us and is just preparing us for everything in his purpose for us. We are so thankful. We taped the Sunday school hour this morning. And uh, if you miss that, oh my, you need, we need to get that tape available somehow because it was powerful. And I want everyone to hear that. If you missed either of the services, Friday night or Saturday evening, go to our YouTube channel, catch up. Don't miss one word of what the Lord has sent to, sent to us through Brother Victor Jackson this weekend. Aren't you glad to be here together in the presence of the Lord right now? And we are so thankful that Brother Victor Jackson was able to adjust his schedule. Actually, it was just an orchestration of the Spirit of the Lord. And I said to him the other night after uh, I had fed him a meal, he, he, he didn't have time to eat supper uh, Friday night. So got him some supper after the service. And as we were getting our cars, I said, he was supposed to come in February, but COVID uh, made that impossible. And I said to him, aren't you glad you're here now instead of February? And he immediately, being from Louisiana and Florida, understood what I meant. And a big smile came across his face. But uh, we may ask you to come back in the middle of February sometime. <laughs> so you can experience the other weather of Michigan. But we are so honored to have this vessel of the Holy Ghost, this precious young man who is giving his life to the work of the kingdom with us. And, and I just want him to come. And as he comes, I want you to remain standing. I want you to give the Lord a hand clap for what he is doing through Brother Victor Jackson's life and ministry. Praise the Lord, church. So great to be back in the house of God and had such a wonderful time this weekend. Uh, thoroughly enjoy uh, being able to uh, get to teach this morning and uh, uh, taught on the dirt of ministry. So if you want to know what that means, you have to go check it out. Amen. Uh, all positive, all uh, exciting. I just love breaking down the Word of God. Amen. His Word is alive. And uh, tried and true and comes forth as gold. And uh, I've made up my mind to just stand on His Word. And uh, when I don't know what to do, I just stand on His Word. And I know if I just stand there, everything's going to work out. Amen. Uh, nothing about these times that we're living in changes the book. Aren't you thankful for that? Yes. Amen. Amen. And so uh, it's my safety. It's my security. Uh, the Bible calls the word of God uh, a hammer. And so sometimes I need God to break me down a little bit. Uh, word of God is also known as a fire. Sometimes I just need the Word of God to just purge some things out of me. Word of God is like water, it says. Sometimes I need His Word to just cleanse me. Word of God is like milk. Sometimes I just need it to nourish me. It's like meat. Sometimes I just need it to put some strength on my bones. Aren't you thankful that the Word is whatever you need it to be in whatever season that you're in. And uh, I give honor to you and I commend you for your hunger. Uh, thank you so much for your kindness. Uh, so thankful uh, for Pastor Walker and his wife and their kindness to me and my family, uh, their commitment to this wonderful truth, their example, and uh, all the volunteers that have been working behind the scenes. I give honor to you. Uh, thank you for those that set up the coffee and the snacks in the back. 
uh, I just believe in that. Amen. Just, just something. I just believe in that. Amen. And uh, all the sound team, media team, give honor to you. All the ministry represented here. Uh, so good to see uh, Brother Johnston, and uh, so good to see him. And uh, got to uh, spend some time with them uh, this week. And did a Spanish conference on the West Coast a few weeks ago. Uh, got to see him there and uh, love what God is doing uh, in the spirit and talked about fellowship this morning and uh, just excited. I'm just excited, guys. I just love God's word. And um, let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Gospel of Luke chapter 24 and verse 26. Uh, I apologize that my my wife and son aren't with me. They normally travel with me 95% of the time. James Asher has been on over 450 flights. Uh, He's executive platinum status with American Airlines. Uh, uh, My wife is executive platinum status with American Airlines. So we they know us by name when we go into the Orlando airport. Uh, we've got friends, the gate agents. I'll be in Chicago sometimes, and they'll be like, hey, Mr. Jackson, good to see you. I'll be in uh, Los Angeles because some of these uh, flight attendants, they have to work at these different locations. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Brother Jackson, it's good to see you. I'm, I'm in Los Angeles. Hey, wait, we're, I just saw you in Miami. And, and so we're just making family all across the nation, and uh, they love James Asher. James Asher. Uh, he's been executive platinum status since he was three years old, and and uh, they were checking him in when he was an infant, and uh, so there's just been an affinity there, and he loves flying, and he drinks. They ask him what he wants to drink, and he's like ginger ale, please, and <laughs> and uh, he just crosses his legs, and uh, we play the Nintendo Switch for a little bit together, two players, and. Uh, we just have some fun. We're making some memories. and uh, But greetings to you from them. Uh, next time they'll be with me. Uh, just uh, got some in-laws in town and some folks from Columbia. And, uh, so we're just having a good time with that. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 24 and verse 26. Ought... Not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he said, it meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. I want to talk to you on that subject this morning, the breaking of bread. Uh, Why don't you lay your Bibles down, everyone close your eyes, lift up your hands, and ask God to speak to us. Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you have imparted, for what you have already done. I'm asking for you to move in this place in a mighty fashion. I'm asking for you to bless your people. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost minister as only you can. Let lives be changed forever. God, let the word of God pierce. Let it be sharper than any two-edged sword, God. Let it defy asunder as it will, God. Let it be exactly what every person needs it to be. Let people be empowered and edified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? (laughs) 
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The breaking of bread. These two disciples were on the road to Emmaus, distraught, hurting, broken because they had just watched their dream die. They watched as the nails went through his hands. They watched as the nails went through his feet. They watched as he gave up the ghost at Calvary, and they watched their dream get crucified. Not only did they watch the heartache of a dream dying, but three days later, now they're confused because they hear that his tomb is empty. Now the worst goes through their mind because they think that somebody stole his body. And they are trying to process how something so bad could happen to someone so good. You and I, we battle with the same things in our minds. How something so tragic could happen when you're just trying to do right. When you're just trying to live right. Why did it happen to my family when I'm just trying to be faithful? Why did it happen to my marriage, my kids, when I'm just trying to do the right thing? When they told me to worship, I worship. They told me to pray, I prayed. They told me to be faithful, I faith, I'm faithful. Yet tragedy still struck me. How many of you know that tragedy is no respecter of persons? That it'll knock on the faithful door, it'll knock on the unfaithful door. It'll knock on the rich's door, it'll knock on the poor's door. Tragedy is no respecter of persons. But they are walking on the road to Emmaus, confused, heartbroken, trying to process how something so tragic could have happened to someone so perfect, someone so great. And they are questioning in their hearts, and they are doubting, and they are fearful as they are trying to process the weight of a lost dream, the weight of lost glory, the weight of a lost future. And as they are questioning and as they are battling with their faith and as they are doubting, the Bible says that they walk together and they commune together and reason together. And while they were questioning, while they were doubting, while they were fearful, the Bible says that Jesus himself drew near. Now, that makes me want to preach a little bit because while they were questioning, it could not stop God from drawing close. Uh, while they were doubting, while they were fearful, while they were trying to process the weight of everything that happened, nothing could stop the presence of God from drawing close. Can I tell you, you don't have to come to church to pretend to be perfect to get a touch from God. Uh, you can come in the middle of your doubts, uh, in the middle of your questions, in the middle of your fears, uh, and there is nothing can, that can stop your God from drawing close right where you are and lift you up in the middle of of the ashes. Uh, some people think that they have to pretend to get a touch from God. Uh, I'm afraid too many Christians were wearing masks long before COVID came. Uh, they come to church, put their church mask on. Come on, somebody. Uh, nothing's wrong with me. How you doing, brother? Oh, you know, everything's great. You know you lying. Uh, uh, how you doing, sister? Oh, you know, uh, it couldn't be better. You know you lying. Uh, but somehow you feel like you have to put on a show uh, to get God to come down where you are. But if you can be vulnerable and honest and say, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't have it all together. God will not pass you by. He'll come right where you are and he'll lift you up and he'll give you understanding. Uh, he is willing to come where you are. He is 
of the Holy Ghost is known as a comforter. Uh, the Greek word is paraclete, which literally means the divine presence uh, coming alongside to help you. Uh, when you fall, God doesn't stand above you uh, and say, what's wrong with you? Get up here. No. Uh, he comes down right in the middle of your mess uh, and he comes alongside you uh, and says, come on, let, we're going to do this together. Uh, come on up. But if you fall down, he comes right back down with you. Uh, he doesn't just uh, uh, make you meet uh, some expectations he comes alongside you and he helps you. He gets yoked together with you that you might grow, that you might develop. I'm telling you, nobody here is too far from God. God isn't afraid of your circumstance, of your mess, of your filth, of your heartache. He's willing to step down in the middle. It, uh, just to show you that he's still God uh, and he's still on the throne uh, and his love for you is still unconditional. He draws near to them while they're questioning, while they're doubting, while they're battling for their faith, while they're questioning. Can, can I tell you, God is not intimidated by your questions. I said he's not afraid of your questions. Because he uses questions to lead to revelation. He uses questions to lead to his presence. You don't have to go to the world with your questions. You can bring them into the presence of God, and he will show you that he's always the answer. It's not intimidated by your questions. He uses questions to provoke discovery. Adam, where are you? I know where you are, but I'm using the question for you dis to discover how far you have fallen from me. Who do men say that I am? I, I'm using the question to make you search in the spirit that Peter can finally say, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's not afraid of your questions. He doesn't get afraid of questions like, are intimidated by questions like you and I get intimidated by questions. Because as humans, we perceive questions as a challenge to our authority. You tell your daughter, hey, go clean your room. And they come back and they say, why? What did you just say? I said, why, Ma? Come over here. Huh? No, I'm not going to hurt you, but come over here. I'm Because we perceive questions as a challenge to our authority, but God's not intimidated by questions. And it's interesting because researchers and scientists, they did a study on primate cognition. And they were comparing and contrasting the major differences and few similarities that humans and animals have. And as they were comparing and contrasting these human and animals, they realized that humans and animals, they have many differences, but they have a few similarities. One of them, they said, is that animals adapt to their environment in a similar way that humans do. They said animals communicate with their own species in a similar way that humans do. But they said one of the greatest differences between a human and an animal is the ability to ask a question. So questions are a sign of your humanity, a sign of your distinction above every other species. It is a privilege to have questions. It sets you apart because no animal has that capability. They would repeat questions to different animals, and sometimes they would, would talk to animals, and animal could say something back, but the one thing they couldn't do in the primate cognition test was they could not ask a question back. It's a sign of your humanity. It's only with humans that God says, come, let us reason together. Th this is what made God speaking through the donkey so great. The miracle wasn't that God just spoke through the donkey. The miracle was the donkey's first words. The donkey said, why are you hitting me? The miracle wasn't that God just spoke through the donkey. The miracle huh, was that God reached into the donkey's mind, gave it human intellect, human wisdom, human comprehension. And if any animal could talk, the first thing they would ask is, why? But they don't get that privilege. 
they don't get that responsibility. If your dog could talk, the first thing they would ask is, why? Why didn't you feed me more? Why do you go on Sundays all the time? <laughs> What's a job? <laughs> but they don't get that. It's a privilege. And he drew near while they were questioning. But the Bible says their eyes were holding. They did not recognize him. It was Jesus standing right in front of them. But they could not recognize that it was him. And the Bible says that he says, what are y'all talking about? And they said, didn't you hear what happened? Are you a stranger? Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. He said, the chief priests, they have killed him. They've crucified him. And we had trusted that he was the one that should have redeemed Israel. And they said, beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. They couldn't see him. And they said, He's standing, he's standing right in front of them. But they're so traumatized with the pain of yesterday that they could not see what God was doing today. I feel like preaching to somebody right now. That they, they are so traumatized with the problem that they don't even see the miracle standing right in front of them. And you and I, we get so traumatized with what happened that we can't even see what is happening. We get so hurt and paralyzed by what we've been through where we don't even realize uh, we're blinded to the blessings uh, that God is putting right in front of us. It's time uh, to let the past be the past uh, and walk in the anointing uh, and the power and the glory of today. He's standing right in front of him. And he says, look, it's not only bad, but look what he said. This is the third day since these things were done. It's not only bad. It's been three days. And he's like, huh, really? I said, look, let me tell you. It's not only bad. We went to his tomb, and we can't find his body. And he's like, oh. Interesting. So traumatized with the narratives. So traumatized with the issues that they cannot even grasp what he is doing right in front of them. Mm. Finally, he tells them, ought not Christ to have suffered these things to enter into his glory? He said, my suffering became a door to glory. My pain became a pathway to glory. And beginning at Moses and the prophets, he began to expound to them and show them. Him. He begins to reveal, he tried to reveal himself and how all of these things happen. He begins to expound to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And when they drew nigh to the village, they constrained him saying, abide with us. They still don't see him. And the Bible says it came to pass that he said it meet with them. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he was made known in the breaking of bread. They could not see him until he broke the bread. It was more than him, them remembering him breaking the bread, feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000. It was a moment where he told them, he broke the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And they could not see him until they first saw brokenness. They said, I can't see him. He goes, here's how you're going to see me. Here it is. Ah! They said, that's him, that's him, that's him. They could not see him until they saw brokenness. They could not experience another level of him until they first encountered brokenness. And he was known in the breaking of bread. Then the brick brokenness became the pathway to revelation. And brokenness became the pathway to understanding. There's some things in God that you cannot see. 
see uh, until you go through a broken season. Uh, and I got to preach to somebody in this building right now uh, that has gone through some brokenness. Uh, but your brokenness was not in vain. Uh, it was to give you and show you a side of God uh, that you never seen before. Uh, and there's going to be a resurrection that comes out of this brokenness. Uh, there's going to be a new glory that comes out of this brokenness. Uh, there's going to be a new season that comes out of this brokenness. Because uh, there's some levels in God uh, that cannot be unlocked uh, until there are tears and pain on the path. That's what God has been doing in your broken season. They could not see him. They sat down to talk with him, couldn't see him. They fellowship with him, couldn't see him. Can I tell you? There's some signs of God that cannot be unlocked just by praying. There's some things that you got to live through. There's some hurts that you got to walk through. And out of the brokenness, out of the ashes, there's going to be a glory. There's going to be a miracle. There's going to be a turnaround. Oh, somebody clap your hands if you believe that. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Ah. Ah. There's some things in God that cannot be unlocked uh, uh, without a broken season. Uh, and they, when they saw brokenness, he was known uh, in the breaking of bread. Uh, they talked with him. They walked with him. They communed with him. They fellowshiped with him. They ate with him. Uh, but it wasn't until there was brokenness uh, that they said, I see him. Uh, I see him. I see him. Uh, uh, and there's things that God has been doing in your broken season uh, where he's showing you a sign of him that you never saw before. He's opening up doors that you didn't think that he would open before. He is doing things in the shadows. He is working behind the scenes for your family, for your children, on your job, and on your future. You have not been in the broken season for vain. No tears shall be wasted. No trials shall be wasted. God is using it for his glory. He shows them he shows them he tries to reveal himself by opening up Moses and the prophets, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, he tries to show them, he tries to reveal himself through his word but I, I like to believe that he showed them that he always gets glory in the broken places Think about it with me. The beginning of the Bible. Think about it with me. The book of Genesis. Think about it. God created Adam. Adam, the Bible says, he was blessed by God. Hear me. He had an assignment from God to till the garden. He had a purpose from God. He's blessed. He has a purpose. He has a destiny. He has an assignment. And God looks at this man with all this destiny, with all this blessing, with all this power, looks at him and says, it's not God. Hold on one second. His whole creation, he said, it was good. First day, it was good. Second day, it was good. It was good. It was very good. But he looks at this man with all this destiny, with all this future, with this incredible purpose and says, it's not good that man be alone. So God breaks his body open. Oh, Lord. Breaks a rib off of his body. Makes a woman out of the rib. And the Bible says that he that finds a wife finds a good thing. Hold on one second. Let's break this down. It's not good. Breaks him open, makes a woman, makes a wife. And the scripture later would say he that finds a wife finds a good thing. Out of brokenness came goodness. Uh, he names the woman Eve, mother of living. Life came forth out of brokenness. Adam and Eve have children. Fruitfulness came forth out of brokenness. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains the favor of the Lord. Favor came forth out of brokenness. You know what God was saying? Adam, I can do more with you broken than I can do with you whole. And God can do more with you broken than he can do with you whole. Some people like to think that Adam was Plato or something, where God was like, hey, thanks for the rib, bud. No, that was surgery. The first surgery in the Bible. 
He put him under an anesthesia, deep sleep. That's where doctors get the thought process to put a patient to sleep before they cut him open. They got it from Genesis. Puts the surgeon gloves on. Y'all not hearing me out there. Cuts his body open, blood everywhere. Takes the rib off. Y'all like, when y'all see a rib, when y'all see Eve being created, you see this beautiful white crystallized rib. It's like, oh. No, there was meat hanging off of it. It was bloody. Hello? Takes the rib, makes something beautiful out of it. Sews him back together. That is anesthesia begins to wear off, off of Adam. And he wakes up out of that sleep and says, God, what did you do? This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You know what he was saying? It was worth going through what I went through when I see what God made out of what I went through. I said it's going to be worth every tear. It's going to be worth every sleepless night. It's going to be worth the heartache when you see what God has been making. God accomplished more in Adam's life when he didn't know what was going on. Oh, I got to preach to somebody in here because you want it all figured out. And if you don't have it all figured out, you don't believe God's working. God did more in his life when he had no idea what was going on. And he was making a masterpiece that he didn't even realize. And in your life, when you don't know what's going on, you don't know what's going on in the world. God's behind the scenes fashioning a masterpiece. God did more with him broken than he could do with him whole. Think about it with me. He, he mentions Moses. Of course he had to mention Moses. It makes sense. Moses, huh, who... Stephen preaches in Acts 7 and says that Moses was a man of mighty words and deeds in Egypt. Moses had an oratory gift in Egypt. He had strength. But it says that Moses killed an Egyptian supposing that Israel might understand that by his hands he was their deliverer but they understood it not. Moses killed that Egyptian in his own strength. Supposing that the Israelites might rally behind him and he would become the head general and they would kill the Egyptians with swords and spears. But that's not how God wanted to do it. He killed him in the strength of his gifting, the gift of his oratory, the gift of his strength. So God put him through a 40-year broken season and God stripped down his oratory down to a, 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 a stutter. And God said... Now you're ready. Because I can do more with your stutter than I can do with your oratory. Oh, God. Put him in a broken season where he stripped down his gifting to a dependency. Oh, Lord. Strip down the hyperbole, the simile, the metaphor. Strip them down to a, 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 a. Now you're ready. I brought you to a dependency. I could bring 10 plagues with that stutter. I can open up the Red Sea with that stutter. I can give you the tabernacle plan with that stutter. I can give you the Ten Commandments with that stutter. I can do more with your dependency than I can do with your independence. God stripped him down to a stutter. Watch this. Where he could not get the will of God done for his life without God and without his brother. Aaron was his translator. Oh, God. His stutter, his dependency has made him depend on God and his brother to get the will of God done for his life. You know what God's been doing in your broken season? Stripping you down to a dependency where you know you can't do this without God and you can't do it without your brothers and sisters in the church. Before COVID, 
they would send you a text message saying, I'm praying for you. And you were so blessed. You'd be like, you're praying for me. What do I need that for, man? I'm blessed out here. Well, thank you. But somewhere during COVID, after losing loved ones, come on somebody, after losing work, after losing job, after losing sleep, after confusion, after anxiety, somewhere you got a text message that said, praying for you, and you were like, thank you so much. What are y'all doing after church Sunday? You want to go out to eat or it Out of the bottle. You've been getting discouraged because you haven't seen any rain from heaven yet. The rain of blessing hasn't come from heaven yet, but God's looking right at your brokenness because he knows that blessing is going to flow from the bottom. Right out of the brokenness, a spring, a wellspring of wisdom, a wellspring of blessing is going to pour out. I hope I'm helping somebody. They... Samson, there came a moment where Samson, a young lion, came and roared at him. And when this young lion came to roar at him, the Bible says that Samson broke that lion open. He rent that lion in two. And after he broke open the lion, there were a bunch of bees that were buzzing in the territory looking for the perfect place to produce honey. And they said, why not produce honey right in the middle of the lion's brokenness? We're going to produce honey in a spot we know we won't be bothered because nobody expects sweetness to come out of brokenness. He breaks open his body, and some bees come and make a beehive, a bee's nest, right in the middle of the brokenness of the lion. And this is interesting because it takes a lion's body about a month to fully decompose above the ground. But it takes a beehive two to three months to completely deteriorate. Boy, you're going to throw me out of here. Oh, Lord, I'm about, to get, I'm about to run in this place. It takes a lion's body a month to fully decompose, but it takes a beehive two to three months to completely deteriorate, which means long after the lion's body was gone, the honey that was produced out of the lion still held on. And the honey lasted two to three times longer than the brokenness did. Who am I preaching to uh, that your sweet season is going to last two to three times longer than your broken season? Uh, How long have you been broken? Has it been three years? Well, get ready for six to nine years of sweetness coming your way. How long has you been broken? Has it been 15 years? Get ready for 30 to 45 years of a sweet season because the sweetness is going to last two to three times longer. That lion didn't understand in its brokenness that, that Samson would come back and partake of the honey. Uh, that, that, that brokenness was crucial uh, to feed the man of God. Uh, that Samson's family would come and partake out of that honey. Uh, that, that the brokenness was so the people of God uh, could be fed. Uh, what if I told you your broken season was never about you? Uh, but it was so family could partake of later generations uh, of the hell that you went through uh, and still take sweetness what if I told you it was about a community uh, that needed some honey Uh, what if I told you it was about a community uh, that is addicted to drugs uh, and addicted to all types of things uh, and they need somebody to be broken Uh, so when they come into the house of God uh, they don't have to struggle to feel the presence of God Uh, but there's a whole bunch of broken people uh, with pots of honey uh, and they be able to partake of it and they don't have to wrestle 
It was never even about you. It was because there are some people you're connected to that need some money. Oh, God. So when they walk into church with all of their mess, with all of their brokenness, they don't have to struggle or strain to get God to come where they are. But they walk in and there's sweetness everywhere. There's honey everywhere because there's a bunch of broken people that's been through some stuff, huh? and they get to partake of it. Huh? That's why you're qualified for ministry. Huh? That's why you're qualified to be used. Huh? Not because you're perfect, but because of what you've been through. I'm preaching to somebody in this building right now. Huh? Not because you have it all together, huh? but it's feel the wind of the Holy Ghost in this place. Huh? I feel some honey beginning to drip down on your worship. Come on, lift up those hands and open up your mouth. Huh? I feel the glory of God beginning to descend on this auditorium. Huh? I feel the glory of God beginning to descend on somebody's heart and somebody's life. I feel the sweetness beginning to descend. Uh, Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, you need to stand on your feet where you are right now. And you just need to throw both hands up. And you need to let the honey to begin to flow. In the name of Jesus Christ, I feel somebody entering into their sweet season right now. I feel somebody entering into their turnaround season right now. I feel somebody entering into their breakthrough right now. I feel somebody coming out of the ashes. Coming out of the ashes with a fresh anointing. Coming out of the ashes with a new delivery. Coming out of the ashes with a new and a fresh touch from God. Come on. I want you to lay your hands on the person next to you right now. I want you to put your hand on their shoulder or grab their hands and begin to pray over them and begin to loose honey over their life. Begin to speak sweetness over their life. And all out of your brokenness, there's about to be sweetness that pours over. Out of your brokenness, there's about to be sweetness that pours over. Your sweetness is about to heal somebody's wound. Somebody his eyes are about to be enlightened. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to speak. Come on, right now. That's it. Speak it over their life. Speak a turnaround. Speak a breakthrough. Come on, out of your pain, you're ministering right now. Out of your pain, you're ministering to somebody right now. Out of your heartache, out of your tears, out of your suffering, they're beginning to reap honey out of it. Come on, you are feeding them. Come on, they're feeling refreshed. You have something to give. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, some of you need to step out of your seat right now and come find a place to pray. Come find a place to dip your hands into the honey. Come on, some of you need to, some of your families, you need to grab your family by the hand and walk them up to the front and find a place to pray. There's plenty of space up here and begin to go after God together and say, we're coming out of this. We're going to come out of this better than we went in. We will not be destroyed by our brokenness. We may not be destroyed by our brokenness. We're going, we're being developed. We're being delivered. We're being empowered. That's it. Come and find a place to pray. Come and dip your hands into the honey. I'm telling you, your eyes are going to be enlightened. I'm telling you, God is for you. I'm telling you, you will not be destroyed. You will not backslide. You will not throw in the towel. I'm telling you, God has a plan for your life. I'm telling you, you and your family are coming out of this stronger. I'm telling you, you and your wife are coming out of this different. You're coming out of this better. Your kids are coming out of it with fresh vision. In the name of Jesus, you're coming out of this with a ministry. Come on. That's it. You find somebody to pray with wherever you are. But I feel honey beginning to flow in this place. I feel somebody getting strengthened by the word of the Lord. I'm so thankful that the word is sweeter than the honeycomb. I feel the word beginning to bring sweetness on somebody's wounds on somebody's pains on somebody's suffering in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ
Hallelujah. If somebody can come, uh, play softly on the piano for a moment, but I want you to just find somebody to just link up with. You, you don't realize this, but somebody near you needs needs a hug. Someone near you just needs to know that you care. And they're going to feel God's arms begin to wrap around them. I, w I don't want anyone to be by yourself. I want you to go find somebody. Go find somebody near you. Because there's something healing taking place in the body right now. God has brought us to a dependency on him and on one another. We, we were waiting for the honey to come from heaven. We didn't realize honey was coming from the person next to us, brokenness. I want you to join with them right now. And I just want you to pray together. You don't even have to lift up your voice loud if you don't want, but I just feel such a peaceful spirit that has entered this building. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. God is for you. His eye is on the sparrow, and I, I know he's watching over me. I said, just minister to one another right now. I feel the love of God in this place. I feel the love of God in this place. That's it. Let's just stay in this peaceful mode right now. I feel honey being poured in people's wounds.
been walking through a room that you thought you knew well and you uh, you could navigate without turning the light on because you didn't really want to maybe it was late at night or in the middle of the night or whatever and you, you were walking through but you forgot you left that suitcase or whatever it was that's not usually there and you can easily almost stumble over something in the darkness I feel like all morning long from the Sunday school hour through this morning worship time that God has used Brother Jackson to turn some lights on to help us to see some things in a way that maybe we weren't seeing them before and maybe we were walking through not situations that were totally unfamiliar to us but but yet even through some situations that we'd become familiar with but but we didn't have the light on properly to see it as we should see it and remember what the word of god says about itself thy word is a what lamp unto my feet and a what light unto my pathway I feel like we have seen that very scripture be manifested all morning long here and just wonderful clear lights have been turned on some of the situations in our lives to understand them better to see them clearly as he would have us to see them isn't God good let's just stand together right now and in conclusion of this wonderful weekend let's sing this with Sarah there's something about his presence that changes everything in the son who's there to be able to view that message and he's going to be going to uh, minister there but he is used all over the country all parts of different parts of the world and everywhere he goes let's just pray for him that God's covering will be around him God's strength will sustain him and that 
God's word will continue to flow with such revelatory light through him. Lord Jesus, we pray for all these things for our precious brother Jackson that we love. Thank you for raising him up, Lord, at this time and this hour for your church, for your people. And thank you for the way you have poured through him and are pouring through him and will continue to pour through him your words of life, your words of light, your words of direction, your words of revelation and understanding. And Lord, bless his precious wife. Bless his little son, James Asher. Let his entire family be covered of your spirit and let every purpose you have for them as a family in your kingdom be brought about in your wisdom, in your timing, in your way. I am asking this for my precious brother in your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. Jesus, we're depending on you. We're depending on you to see us through. Jesus, we're depending on you, Jesus. We're depending on you, Jesus. We're depending on you. We're depending on you to see us through. Let's sing it again, Jesus. We're depending on you, Jesus. We're depending on you, Jesus. We're depending on you. We're depending on you to see us through. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ellen. Yes, those two men on the road to Emmaus said, Did not our hearts burn within us? Is anyone's heart burning within you right now? I, I, I feel like them. We have, we have heard words from our Lord through his servant. And I, I, I just feel like my heart's burning within me for thanksgiving and joy the words that have been shared with us this weekend it's just been so so wonderful and we will look forward to the next time that brother jackson can be with us again because there's there's just a, a connection that, that is a connection in the spirit one of my mentors taught me long ago that that sometimes you meet people and, and you shake hands and, and, and you get to know them a little bit and then there are those times when you meet people and your inner man shakes hands and, and that's how I've always felt about Brother Victor Jackson and I'm so thankful that he's been able to be with us again this weekend God bless you precious ones thank you if, if you did not come prepared uh, with a check for our Move the Mission offering, remember you can go to Simple Give and just do it that way. We, I just say that one more time because uh, the youth uh, committee of our state and then uh, nationally, 
they are right now assimilating totals. Actually, the official move the mission date was about, I think, three weeks ago. But we're, we're running a little bit late when we were taking our sacrifice offerings. So as soon as you can get that in, if you had not come prepared to to uh, put it in that box today, please, uh, you, you can do that through Simple Give, or you can contact Brother Josh or Sister Carly and let them know, just so we'll know an amount that we can then tell them as they are assimilating the totals for that offering. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being the wonderful people of God you are. Aren't we blessed to be in the family of God together and 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 just have each other and our Heavenly Father. Praise God. God bless you, precious church. You're dismissed in the wonderful name of Jesus. Brother Ben and Sister Beth, it's good to have you back home. Uh, we missed you, but we're glad you had some wonderful time away. It's, it's important to have that time away. God bless you.